So this is for the uh, organic section. It says octane and butane are in the same homologous series. Describe what is meant by the homologous series. So we're talking about something with the same functional group, yeah, um, which in, in this case here, for example, is a double bond. Yeah, it could be like an OH group or even the fact of a, a lack of a functional group, okay, like a, a saturated alkane. So same general formula. So it's made the same way. So it might be like CN, H2N, something like that. Or, H, or H2N plus 2. Again, that kind of general formula. So we've got the same thing. Um, increasing CH2 every time, that will do it, but also the same chemical properties. So that's what it means. So in any of those two should be fine. Next one, show the structure of a butene molecule. Okay, so the first bit's been drawn. So it's one mark here is because it's but, so it's four carbons, and the rest of it is, is ene. So you can see it's about a times two formula. And the idea is, if it's just times two, it must be an alkene. It means it contains that double bond. And the things to sort of be careful of are the fact that we've got this um, around every carbon it needs to have four bonds. Okay, so make sure you haven't got five, make sure you haven't got three. Okay, so if you've done that, that gets you two marks. Um, this question here, I didn't really like. Um, name the process used to converge larger alkane molecules into ethene and hydrogen. Well, I've never seen a question like this, but it was in there, so I thought I'd keep it in anyway. Um, the idea is that, generally speaking, we should have alkanes, large alkanes, breaking down into, so let's say, medium-sized alkanes and small alkenes, uh, hence the ethene molecule. The fact that hydrogen is in there is a bit of a curveball. Um, in, in theory, hydrogen could be possible because lots of the molecules are breaking up. Um, in fact, after doing some research, particulate carbon could, in theory, be formed as well. So. I say, I've never seen this come up in, in any mark schemes everywhere. So I would definitely be sticking to the fact that you have um, an alkane going to form an alkane, a smaller alkane, plus an alkene. That's definitely what I'd be going with. Okay, so I wouldn't be mentioning hydrogen in any, in any question about cracking. Okay, um, so we've got our molecular structure of ethene here. And it's saying we've got a type of reaction here, an addition reaction between ethene and bromine. Okay, so the idea is all we're doing is we're going to open up that double bond um, because we've got a spare one there, a spare bond on each carbon we could use and still keep it intact. Therefore, you can put a bromine on each one, and um, and you'd be end up end up with a saturated hydrocarbon with its hydrogens on, but you'd also end up with a dibrominated product like that. The next one's talking about fractional distillation. So they've got some petroleum. Uh, it's going to be a mixture of different alkanes, different lengths. And what they're doing, they heat it up. And as it goes up here, the ones with the smaller chains, so you're going to have some with small chains, some with bigger chains, and with even bigger chains. And the idea is that the small ones have less attraction between the molecules. So it's easier to warm them up and separate them. So they'll boil first. So the first one that comes down would probably have been this one here because it's a lighter fraction. So it looks lighter in color as well. And you can see it's getting darker as it comes around. It's going to pass through the condenser. So the vapor can turns back from a gas into a liquid. Okay, as it goes through this, so there'd be of cold water coming in and out. So the cold water would probably come out a little bit warmer. Okay, and then it drips out as a, as a liquid. Okay. Um, so what's the process? It's fractional distillation. Um, distillation just means you're boiling it and condensing it in a different place. Fractional means not so much that you're getting lots of different fractions, but the, the, the fact that the boiling points are similar. They're not too far apart. Okay. So that's what it's talking about here. The next question, um, I might have already answered this. Why the boiling temperature increases from liquids double uh, W to liquid Z? Um, again, I've already kind of mentioned this. The idea is that as the, the chains get bigger, yeah, the interim intermolecular forces are increasing, and therefore it's going to require more energy to, to separate them. Okay, so I kind of answered that one without even trying. Um, a student suggests that liquids W, X, Y, and Z are four pure compounds, um, and then they're saying, why is this not correct? Well, if it's a pure compound, or pure, just, just one type of molecule, then it's going to have a set boiling point and a set melting point. Okay? Um, because all the molecules in there will be identical and therefore they're going to all require exactly the same amount of energy to separate. Okay. Um, what happens is when you get in impurities in there, 
you end up getting a, a, a boiling point range or a melting point range. And this would happen, for example, if you um, remember, you get sometimes like plateaus like this, um, then in theory, it should plateau as the substance is going from, let's say, a liquid to a gas. This one was liquid here and this one was gas. Then in that middle process there, then obviously you're going to be boiling it. And what happens is every single molecule then goes through there. If the line is not straight and if you're getting a range of temperatures, that suggests that some molecules are not identical and that perhaps they've got slightly bigger chain lengths or shorter chain lengths and that's making a difference. Okay. The next question talks about uh, four, using four uh, carbon atoms to make a saturated hydrocarbon. So this one's actually butane. This one just four carbons in a row and hydrogens on every single one and you'll get that times two plus two general formula. Okay. Um, methane and hexane are hydrocarbons in the same homologous series. So just one similarity in the chemical properties of methane and hexane. Um, so one similarity in the properties. I've put same chemical properties, same general formula. Again, that's kind of the idea from, um, um, from a previous question. But I suppose if we're going to be specific about this, um, they both undergo combustion, wouldn't they? Okay. Um, and the fact that they've both got no um, no double bonds, no OH groups, things like that, they're, um, they're relatively unreactive, with the exception of that um, combustion. Okay. Um, similarity in chemical property. Again, the, uh, the sort of, if you're talking about boiling points and melting points, you're talking about physical properties. So we're not looking at um, well. I suppose it does just say properties, doesn't it? So I suppose we could say that, but they're not going to be quite be the same. You might be able to get away with um, low boiling point, yeah, because methane is going to turn into a gas, hexane is a liquid, so it depends how close you want to uh, to talk about it. Um, but again, the fact that they're changing as the number of carbons increase, um, I would probably stick to that. Okay.